So, as I was saying, I got a little video of it. But what I'm saying is that, you know, I'm going to be open and honest here. I have no problem giving people money. I don't. They talked about it two weeks ago in Bible study about giving. And that we're not supposed to give unless God leads us to give. Or help unless... Well, they was giving. They was talking about giving. They was talking about helping. That's a big difference. Um, So, I say, Mia and all that, true. I said, but there are people that has the gift of help. God gave them the gift of help. Or they always had the initiative to help people. And then when they came over to the Lord's side, God advanced it. Advanced it. And, and critiqued it. Where he could use them to help those that are in need. So therefore, those people that are... that Those people that God has initially... Uh, what's the word? Initially picked... To help those that are in need. Not to give all the time, but to help. You know? It says the gift of help. Not so much the gift of of giving. The gift of help. And when you have the gift of help, giving is a part of it. Because you're going to be giving things a lot. Not looking for none in return. So a lot of people don't understand that the gift of help is a part of giving. And it's a gift. Just like you give a gift to somebody, you don't expect nothing back. A gift. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Right? Now, because it's a gift that God has bestowed upon us by his death, that Jesus, by sending his son to die for us, there is still a, a life. There is still something We have to give to God in order to receive the gift. You see what I'm saying? And in order to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, we have to give God our life. So you see, you start out giving. And when you decide to give God your life, that means you have decided to submit yourself to God so that God can use your life to perform his miracles, his thoughts, his his feelings through. Your life, your brain, your hands, your tongue. Other than that, you is just forfeiting, forfeiting the 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 real. Oh man, you're just forfeiting the reality of Him using you for His good because you're not giving yourself to Him. So therefore, what am I saying? So therefore. If God, if, if people put you in a position in the church, but God didn't put you there, you can't do what God wants you to do because God didn't put you there. Now, what God is, what God may be telling you is that you need to leave that position alone. You need to step back off of that position. You just need to be who, I, who he wants you to be. But because somebody placed you there, you're scared to step down. You're scared to back up. You're scared not to take on the responsibilities of what that position asks for. But yet and still, you, you, you're going you're gonna to fake it. You're going to be untrue. And, and people don't understand that is a form of lying. That's mistruth. And mistruth is an undercover of a lie, as people will put it. But lying is lying. So if you're placed in a position that you know you ain't got no business in, but somebody placed you there because of maybe their respect for you, or maybe because they put you there in a place of somebody else that they may not like, or they put you there so that they won't have no hard feelings with you and you won't disrespect them and whatever they want of you and from you, you'll give if they place you there. Then you're living a lie and you will never be blessed. You will always go through some sort of, oh man, help me, Holy Ghost. You will always go through some sort of 
Mm. Hey, I'm looking for a specific word, but I can't find it. You will, so I'm going to paraphrase it. You will always go through something negatively, whether it's sickness, whether it's shamefulness, whether it's uh, 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 unsure feelings. You will always go through these things. And then some more that I can't even think to name. But I just threw them out there so you have an idea of what I'm trying to say. You will always go through these things because you're doing it for yourself or for somebody else. So, if you're positioned as a deacon, we're going to start as a deacon, right? We'll start with the men first because everything falls on the woman. So, if you're positioned as a deacon, there's a job that God wants you to do as a deacon. And if you have not consulted God for that job and you're placed in that position, then you're going against God. If you're placed in that position because somebody feels like they want to put you there, to shine for them, to make them look good, or to put you in a position so that you will do something for them, you are deceiving yourself and being deceived by the enemy. Because that's all the enemy do is seeking whom he may devour so that he can deceive them just like he deceived them in Genesis. He ain't going to stop because you have been uh, ordained as a deacon, he's not going to stop there. And he's not going to stop because he know that you was placed in that position by carnalness, not by holiness. So you can't perform, mm, you can't perform the deeds of a deacon. You can't do the things that God wants you to do as a deacon because you don't know what God wants you to do. And it's not so much as knowing about the position is knowing how to do the position based on how God wants you to do it. Not based on what you read in a book, based on what somebody sat down and told you, this is what I want you to do. I want you to do this. I want you to be there. I want you to open up the doors. I want you to read the scripture. I want you to do the prayer. I want you to introduce me. I want you to, to wash my car, wax my car. I want you to shine my shoes. That, 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 that's not what it's all about. I mean, that may play a part in it, if God's safe for you to do it. So you got to know how to cipher God's job and man's job. So yeah, you go in there and you get the car wash out of respect for your leader. Your, who, whoever, your, whoever your leader is. Out of respect for your, your pastor. Or out of respect of your bishop. Or out of respect of your apostle. I need my car wash. Okay, I got you, apostle. So you go do your job. You're there. You're there to help him. Just like that woman is there to help mate that man. That deacon is there to help mate that bishop, pastor, um, um, apostle. Now I have no idea what a deaconess do. I have no idea what a minister do. Okay? But you're in that position. See, that's not my position. So I don't read up on it. If I was told, okay... Uh, uh, Sister Jordan, we making you a minister. Okay, I'm going to God. Lord, what is a, what does a minister do? I need you to tell me what a minister do. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to do research. I'm going to ask other pastors, especially if my pastor and bishop is not telling me what I'm supposed to do as a minister. I'm going to go to other sources to find out. I'm just not going to be just sitting up in the church with the title and don't know what to do. Okay. So now you're in this position as a minister, but you're not, well, well, the word itself explains itself. I'm not going to say self-explanatory, explanatory, because I'm sure there's more to being a minister than the minister word, right? But if you ain't even got the minister word together, how the crazy you, you a minister, right? Okay, this is going up. Now let's go to to missionary, right? I think that's the next. I don't know what else is. I don't know what else for the man. We're going to leave it to the man because I think after minister, you go, okay, you got the evangelist for a man. Okay. We don't have no men in our church that's evangelists because it seems like their, their logic of an evangelist is a woman. So everybody in the church had to go through the 
through the protocol of being an evangelist. Never, excuse me, was ordained as a a a a evangelist as a woman. A woman, and nobody in our church have ever been ordained as a deaconess. Okay, for whatever reason, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not up there on that board to know nothing about that. That's not my lane, so I could care less. Okay, now, now you become a missionary. Don't know nothing about. Well, I ain't going. Well, I'll speak for myself. I know about missionary because I was doing missionary when I was seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because I got saved at twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. I got saved at twelve years old. So prior to that, I was doing missionary work. With my grandmother and Bishop Mingo. We was going to hospitals. We was going to people's houses and everything. Now, the first thing that I did that ensured to me that I had the gift of help. One day we went to the hospital to visit someone that they knew. Right? I don't know who. I can't remember who it was at the time. Meaning I can't remember whether it was somebody in our church or somebody that they was visiting. Because they always was visiting somebody. They always was going to the hospital. Visiting. And this is Bishop Mingle that I'm talking about. She wasn't a bishop then. She was a pastor. Right. So this is this is, this is is her work. She went to people's houses. She sat up in people's houses. She prayed for people. She, she went to hospitals. Visit people. Prayed for people. She went overseas. She went to the she went to Africa. She went to um Barbados. I think one time she went to the Bahamas. She went down south. We had a church down south. She went to New Rochelle, I believe that's upstate New York. She had a church up there. Okay? So all these things, these places that she was going, I was going. So I was already doing my missionary work. I was already in training for a missionary. Right? So now here's the catch. When I got ordained as a missionary, I couldn't put my missionary skills in effect because they had no knowledge of what a missionary is supposed to do. And if they did have knowledge of what a missionary is supposed to do, it wasn't for me to do. So missionaries that was in House of Prayer, they was going behind the scenes undercover, what they call it, DL, Making plans to go to hospitals to visit people. Making plans to go to people's houses without telling me. And I was a missionary. And then they would come back to the church, get up in the church, and announce the places that they went. And then the pastor would get up at that time. The pastor at that time would get up and, 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 and commend them and... and, and, and applaud them and praise them. Oh, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go out. So now they're blasting me out because I didn't go with them when they didn't tell nobody. They only told who they told. So it went like that for years. And I would go to the pastor at that time and I would talk to the pastor at that time and let him know that this is what the people were doing and he would never say nothing to them in front of me. But if they went somewhere and I didn't go, he would always have something to say about me in front of everybody. And everybody knew he was talking about me because everybody else was on the boat. They all got on the boat and went over to the hospital or whatever. Now, okay, let me, let me, let me say thank you, Holy Ghost, for bringing it back to me. So let me go back to that first missionary experience that I did. So now we went to go see this lady. We in the hospital. And... It was me, Mommy, Gaga. I think Mother Giles was there. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't remember who else, but I know me, Mommy, and Gaga was there. I know I was there. And I guess that's the importance to know I was there because the story is about me. Okay? And missionary work. So I'm sitting there along with them, and she's talking to the person that's sick, and the person wanted her to pray. So they prayed. She prayed, etc. Then we all sat back down. So now... Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something. Like a little jerk of hand. So when I turned and looked, I saw a lady in a wheelchair, right? And I saw another lady, which at the time I guess was the nurse, right? Went and 
was like moving her hand to her, like, like scolding her, right? And the lady just sat there with her mouth shut. And I think she had put, she was feeding her baby food, jaw food. So that was baby food. She was feeding her the baby food. And she was shaking her head like she didn't want it. And I'm not sure whether the lady spit it out. But let's just say she spit it out. The nurse got mad, wiped herself off, her face off. She left the lady all spit it up. But she wiped herself off. And then she went and picked up the spoon again to put to the lady's mouth in the wheelchair. And the lady closed up her mouth and was shaking her head. And the lady got mad and slammed the spoon down, slammed the jar down, and walked away. And the lady was there, all messed up. Because when she slammed the jar down, the applesauce spilled all over the lady. I'm going to tell you something. Before I knew it, I mean, it was like something in me just pushed me up out my seat. And I went walking over to the lady. I grabbed the tissue up and I started wiping her mouth. And I, and I, and I took her hand. I, wiped, I was wiping her hand off. I said, you okay? You okay? And the lady just looked at me and I could see the tear coming down. Apparently she couldn't talk. Now, I guess... Now that I'm older, I know the type of wheelchair she was in. She must have. She appeared to be paralyzed from the neck down, cause she couldn't talk, she couldn't move anything, but her head was shook back and forth. So the neck, she could move her head. I guess that's what I saw. I saw her with her head, and she started crying. I saw the tears coming out, and she couldn't feed herself. So I picked up the jaw. I wiped her off. Now, mind you, I am in the hospital with this lady. I wiped her off. Don't know this lady from Adam and Eve. Wiped her off, her face off and everything. Picked up the jaw. And I said to her, I said, you want some of this? She shook. Now, now, do you hear me? She shook her head. Yes. I said, oh, okay. And I began to feed her. And she opened up her mouth, and she took the food. And I waited. She swallowed it down. I wiped her face and her mouth, and I went and gave another. By now, I guess it went around to that area that somebody was feeding the lady that didn't know the lady, ain't got nothing to do with the lady. And this nurse came back out to me. She came back over to the lady. But she didn't come. I thought she was going to be yelling and da 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 She just came over to me. She said, okay, me got this. She's a West Indian. She said, me got this. So I said, okay. I said, but she really was hungry. I said, you hurt her feelings. So the lady just looked at me. I said, that's not nice. You shouldn't do that to her. And she said, you just don't understand. Hmm. I kind of got what she was saying. Now that I'm in the situation, you know what I'm saying, with my husband. I said, maybe I don't understand. I said, but she doesn't deserve to be treated that way. She said, all right, me got it. By now, it's like three other nurses or whoever it is that come caretakers come around. I, I happen to see a doctor over there in the corner. I'm going to say doctor. She had on a white coat on, so I'm going to say she, doc, she was looking over there with us. She was observing because she was observing. I, I, don't, I didn't see her when the, when the nurse was doing that to her, but I did see her when I walked over there, when I actually calmed the lady down and wiped her face and her hands and stuff like that. Gave her some water. I happened to glimpse up just to look to see if anybody was watching. And I saw her like over in the corner somewhere. Right? And um, when when the lady came back, when the nurse came back and stuff like that, we talked, whatever. And, you know, she was like, All right. I said, yes, yes, I said, you know, just 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 be patient. I can understand. Just be patient. Right. And not mm, how old was I? Maybe I was ten. Maybe I was twelve. Maybe I was safe at the time. I don't know. But I know I was very young. I wasn't a teenager. Cause I I turned a teenager thirteen. Fourteen. 13. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't a teenager yet. So when I walked back over, now mind you, I didn't know that I had an audience. From the church, the church people. Gaga Mommy. Just like I said, I think Mother Giles was there. See, now I gotta try to remember. 
I don't know whether Bishop Anderson was there, because I'll be honest with you, Bishop Anderson did not come to church that often. And Bishop Anderson did not go to too many places with us. It was mainly Mother Giles, Mommy, myself. When Sister Odom came, Deacon Odom Mother joined the church through Mommy bringing her in. Um, she, she came with us. She, she went along with us. Everywhere we would go, she would go with us. Because she and Mommy was close, so she would go with Mommy. She was a real close friend to Mommy. So, when I walked back, Gaga said to me, she said, Sharon, she said, that was very nice. So, I'm here I am, I'm, I'm blushing, I'm, and I'm embarrassed and stuff. She said, what made you go over there and do it? It was like she had an understanding or like she knew that the Spirit of God did that. So, no, I wasn't saved. Because then it would have been on the fact that it was the Holy Ghost that did it. But she said, "Who? what made you want to do that? And I just like, I don't know, God. God. I said, I just felt sorry for her. I said, the lady was was just treating her bad. She said, well, what did you see? I said, well, I saw the lady. No, she said, what did you see that made you get up? I said, I felt sorry for her. And I just saw her pain. I just saw her pain. You know, she can't talk. So... I just saw and felt that she just wanted somebody to understand, you know? And here's the thing. She was not not wanting the food because she didn't want the food. She was not not wanting the food because the lady was being nasty to her. Was being bad to her. So she didn't want the lady to really feed her no more. She wanted to go on about your business. So apparently this lady must have was treating her that way for the longest. For a while. But anyway, my whole point is that that's when I realized that that's what I want to do. Because Gaga, Gaga also said to me, she said, wow, she said, you got the gift of health. She said, you should go into that type of field. And Mother Jobs was like, yeah, I think Bishop Anderson was there. Because I'm like seeing his face. He's just sitting there, sitting back in the chair. He had a tendency of re- leaning back in the chair like he ruled wherever he, wherever he was, he ruled it. <laughs> that was his demeanor, right? So um, I'm, I'm seeing him lean back into the chair, lean back in the chair, you know, like moving his head up and down like, mm-hmm. Bishop was talking like, yeah, he said that was a, that was a nice move. Yes, it was. And she, he was like, yeah, and Mother Jobs was like, yeah. And Mommy was like, uh-huh. She said, and here come Mommy. Mommy's like, here go Mommy. I right? here come Mommy. Yeah, that's Sharon. Sharon is always helping somebody, child. Now she want to go into the story. So, yeah, I tell Sharon, don't bring nobody home from school for lunch. When she, she was just seven years old, and here she come in here with three people. And I already know she coming home with, with friends. She don't even know these people. She don't even know. These girls, every single day, she coming home from school with with people. She bringing people, so she she automatically a missionary. She know the missionary work. She know how to bring people in. So, I would say that sometimes in my messages, in my testimonies, that I already, I already know about missionary. I was doing missionary work before I became a missionary. Way before. I got the title. So they didn't want to give the, the pastor that was the pastor at the time. They didn't want to ordain me as a missionary, but it didn't. God God said, we don't care because she already doing missionary work. And they got to see me doing missionary work. It wasn't me making it up. I was already doing missionary work. So now that I become a missionary, I'm being invited out to bring the message. I'm being invited out to different types of services. Every time I turn around, somebody's calling me. Or when they come to my church, they ask me, would, I, would you like to preach out? Do they, let, they didn't ask me, do they let you preach out? They asked me, do you preach out? And I didn't know what to say because <coughs> it never was told to me that I could preach out. And it never was told to me that I couldn't preach out. So when they started asking me and I would go to leadership, I would be turned down. Never knew to this day why I was turned down. The only thing that was said was that missionaries... Don't preach out. Missionaries ain't got no business preaching. 
and I missed and told somebody that, and I was so, I regretted it. When I said it, and the person came back and asked me, well, wait a minute, so what am I doing? Why, why am I being? So I was like, well, apparently they got out of that. They found out that that was foolishness because everybody's a missionary when they first get saved. And that's what mommy had told me when I first received the Holy Ghost at 12 years old and went back home, and now there's, I didn't know nothing about no... um missionary Sunday. But I know on the second Sundays, mommy would always have on black and white. God, the whole church filled up with black and white, except for, except for Elder Robinson. Elder Robinson wore black and white every single Sunday, every single day. Checking up the moment. So I just thought that was just their uniform that they wore outside. So I was hooked on I was hooked on black and white, wearing it all the time, wearing skirts down to the ground. Nobody never told me, you ain't got to wear your skirts down there, Sharon. You don't even got to wear the skirts down to your ankle. Just dress in modest apparel, Sharon. You see what I'm saying? But because everybody was doing what everybody was doing, and I wasn't asking no questions, me being a child, it never was said to me that you got to wear your dress all the way down there, and it never was said to me that you ain't got to. What was said to me was that don't wear no short dress. And actually, that wasn't said to me. If I ever came up around mommy with a short dress on, mommy would tell me it's too short and don't wear it to church no more. Here's the catch. She never told me not to wear it. She told me don't wear it to church no more. So, people is in position. I don't want to get all on my life because this is not what this is about. People is in positions and because someone placed them there, Right? So now from missionary, you go to evangelist. Nobody don't tell you nothing about how to be evangelist. They just tell you, you need to be out here. You need to be doing it. Oh, I used to hear so much. I used to get tired of it. Okay. Till one day I confront. Okay. Well, what is it we supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be out there evangelizing. What's evangelizing? What are we supposed to do? You're supposed to be out there telling people about the Lord. I said, well, missionary is supposed to do that too. No, 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 no. That's the evangelist job. You go out there, you get the people, you bring them in. Okay. Bring them in. We start talking to them, having conversation with them. They start hitting the evangelist for that. You ain't got no business saying nothing to them. Once they come into church, you leave them alone. It's for the pastor and the bishop to get a hold to them and talk to them. Fine. I ain't going to say nothing. Then you get up and then you say, I don't think nobody say nothing to nobody when they come into church. Did anybody go and find out where Sister Sue was? Did anybody find out where Brother Aaron was? Hold up. Wait a minute. Excuse me. Yes, you told us not to say nothing. When I say that, I didn't tell you to say that. You specifically said for us to go out there and get the people and bring them in. And once they come in, don't say nothing else. Well, you ain't supposed to do that. You're supposed to go, get the people, bring them in, witness to the people. Why should the pastor and the bishop got to do everything? They got all these evangelists here. <laughs> they, they, they sound like they had bipolar. <laughs> Is it bipolar? Schizophrenia, whatever you call it. So, they never could get the evangelizing together. Okay? So, we have all these evangelists. I'm over the evangelist department, missionary and evangelist department. I'm trying to get the missionary and evangelist to be a part of the service. That I didn't make up. This service been going on from day one. Before I was old enough to know anything about a missionary. So, Neil, I would like for you to do this. Can you do this? I want to have this program. Will you come speak for me? No. All All the answers to all the questions that I ever asked is no, no, no. Then it was, don't go and ask nobody nothing, don't do nothing, don't say nothing, unless you come back to us and let us know first. You ain't got no business talking to nobody. Wait a minute. Now you're trying to control my tongue and who I talk to. You were supposed to let me know. Fine, fine, fine. Go. Uh, Such and such, I would like to have such and such to preach. Now, they don't bring no off. They didn't bring no offering last time. They only brought $5. They only brought $10. 
We ain't got time for them. I'm not going over there and preach to them. They ain't coming to preach to us. I don't want to hear nothing. They got on this. They got on that. They got a lash on. They got a wig on. They got a nail on. No, we don't want... So, they go to evangelizing. So, now you just sit. Now you got a church with everybody in there with titles that you gave them and nothing being done. Nothing being done. So, I will continue this. I need to get ready for church. I'll talk to y'all later.